Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. Welcome Hi. back to our weekly live call. My name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. We are an online financial education platform. Um, our content is completely free. We offer over 30 plus completely free courses. And we'd love for you to stop by the website to check out check out our blog, which gets updated every single day. We have brand new articles every day. And my co-host, Yasmir, is going to introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Yasmir. I'm the content creator for Clever Girl Finance, and I'm joining you from New York City. Yes. Yeah, so today we have a very interesting topic that is specifically impactful if you are a woman, you identify as female, um, you know, you purchase these products. We're going to be talking about the pink tax. And um, if you're not familiar with what the pink tax is, it is essentially um, additional pricing that's placed, that's placed on top of the products and or services that are typically marketed to women and girls. So we're going to get into that. But before we, um, we get started, please tell us where you're joining from. I see Kagoma saying that <laughs> she's here first, even though Esther always beats you here. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I see Pamela on. Hello. <laughs> so yes, um, tell us where you're joining from. And uh, before we get started, please check out the Clever World Finance book series. You can find these books um, everywhere books are sold. You can find them at your local library or have your um, library order them for you. And you can also find these as ebooks and audiobooks. And we haven't talked about our planners in a minute. So if you're looking for an undated business or a life planner, please check out um, the Clever World Finance Life Planner and Business Planner. These are available on our website. They are undated, and you can pretty much start using them anytime. And you can see pictures of the inside of them on the website. So we would appreciate your support of the books and the planners and just visit clevergirlfinance.com slash books or check your book retailer. So um, I see folks are still coming on in. Uh, Yasmer, so we'll go ahead and get started with talking about this dreaded, dreadful pink tax. <laughs> Yes, this is a very interesting topic. Um, like you said, Bola, for us women and anyone and anyone that identifies as a woman that are buying certain products, uh, will notice that um, we pay more for the same products that men use, but they pay less for whatever reason. But um, just to <laughs> note that, well, we know why. But <laughs> just to note that um, it, the pink tax is is dubbed the pink pink tax, but that means we're just paying higher. It, it's not that it hasn't, doesn't have to do with tax. And um, it's called pink tax because a lot of our products come in the color pink, yes. which is funny because <laughs> when I was doing research on this, pink used to be a masculine color. Back in the and day, I, yes. yes. Um, so I, I thought that that was, that was very, um, interesting um but uh before we get into like where we see these pink tax um i just wanted to share you uh with share with you a few statistics um that we can provide so like the new york city department of consumer affairs also known as dca um had a study um in which they uh we're um, looking at gender pricing in a roughly 800 um, products, and they found that women's products cost 7% more on average than men's products. Um, an older study um, also um, states, and this was done by California, that women spend generally $1,400 a year extra in these products and these are products that um also men use like lotion and deodorant but unfortunately because we're female we pay more so 800 products were assessed 800 and women are paying on average seven percent more and this can be incredibly impactful 
to a woman's finances because we have to think about the bigger picture here. Mm -hmm. Think about the gender wage gap. So on average, women are getting paid 20% less. You break that down by demographic minorities, Black, Latinas, Native Americans, et cetera. Um, th that 20% is much, much higher, right? So there's a gender wage gap. There is the investment gap that is as a result of the gender wage gap. So we are not earning as much. And as a result, we don't have as much to invest. And then add on the statistics around women, especially women of color, being the, the um, highest demographic or the demographic that carries the highest average student loan debt in America, right? So we have all these things, not getting paid enough, unable to invest enough, highest student loan debt average, and then we're paying 7% more for products and services um, that we use, right? And I find that incredible because that $1,400 that women pay in addition is money that we could put towards saving and investment and enhancing our lives. And so this pink tax, as it, it's something that I think we, we don't think about because we tend to buy the products that we like. A lot of times we buy products that are marketed specifically to women and girls. And I, 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 I can bet that when you go to the store, you're not saying, oh, let me compare this woman's lotion, this, this lotion marketed to women versus this lotion marketed to, to men, right? Because in the store, the women's products really dominate the shelves and the, the men's products are like either on a different aisle, so you don't get to compare, or it's in a small section. Mm -hmm. And so um, paying 7% more is a big deal. However, there are ways... Um, to get around it. And I think there are some other other um, stats that you wanted to share, Yasmer, from the balance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I wanted to um, also mention, yes, the balance is a personal finance website. And it conducted a study that found that um, products for women in personal care uh, generally cost 12.7% more. 12.7%. That is a lot. And yeah, I just, I find it very upsetting. I've known about the pink tax for a long time and there's ways I've tried to counter it, which we're going to talk about, but it's just something that has been called out in the past, but needs to continue being called out to places like the Department of Consumer Affairs, et cetera, so that, you know, legislator legislation can be put into place to stop this unfair pricing. So let's talk about some areas in which women pay more. The obvious area. <laughs> the obvious area is personal care products. So this includes things like shampoo, soap, razors, um, shaving, shaving cream, body wash, deodorant. Um, so they, they're, they're priced um, differently. I live in New York City and um, that we don't have the pink tax here. It's uh, illegal. Yeah, it's illegal. It doesn't mean but, it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. I did my research and yes, I like I, I, I saw deodorants, different brands, and they were priced the same gender. But I, I think they found a loop, loophole because I noticed that uh, the female deodorant had like an extra product. Therefore, it was more money. Yes. Yeah, so they will, but, they will, if something is like 12 ounces, they'll make the female product 12.5 ounces and then charge 50 cents more, a dollar more for mm -hmm. this product. But it's really the same product that does the exact same thing. And if you were to break down the price by ounce per ounce, that woman's product is costing more. So they have found loopholes around it. So like, yes. Soap, shampoo, shaving cream, body wash. The, the biggest difference between these products is the smell. <laughs> Yes, the the ingredients thing. are the same. Mm -hmm. In fact, mm -hmm. sometimes the scents, the scents are the same. It's the exact same in ingredients, but the packaging is different. One is pinkish, feminine, and one is just like, you know, marketed to men. But we are paying more, 12.7% um, more um, across the U.S. And in, in the study that was done by, the, by New York City Department of Consumer Affairs, 7% more on average in New York City. That's that's crazy. So personal care products, right? This is where a lot of women want to spend money. And so this mm -hmm. is where they get you. They charge you more. Um, another area is dry cleaning, right? Um, 
If I take my husband's white shirt to be dry cleaned, a plain white button down shirt, his shirt will cost say $3. If I take my own smaller in material, same white shirt, button down plain, but a smaller women's version, it's going to be charged at $4.50. Wow. Dry cleaners are notorious for this pink tax behavior. <laughs> Uh, yes, are you going to mention some some other examples as well? Um, yes, so they're also, um, I guess they try to like justify <laughs> the, the increase or why it costs more because they add special packaging like, um, like floral, make it pink um and, and all these things just to say this is why the product this product costs more like the example um, that i shared when i was comparing deodorants is one deodorant brand uh i had one separate deodorant that had like an extra ingredient and it was like two dollars it was like a, no it was a dollar fifty more than the men's mm -hmm. And Barry said that she has an example. She found sweatpants for her daughter for $8, but the boys' sweatpants were two for a $10. So she bought the ones for boys. Um, yeah, you know, I see it all the time. So even razors, I do not buy women's branded razors anymore. All the Sheiks, the Venuses, all of those, mm -hmm. because that's where the, the price is. You can tell the price immediately from quantity. So let's say the Venus packet has five right? Um, they will charge, I don't know, $12. And then the men's packaging will have 18 and they will charge $15. It's the same razor, right? And a lot of yeah. times men's razors are even better. <laughs> so yeah. I don't even buy women's razors. Uh, Analyst said they upcharge for that stuff when nobody asked for a fancy packaging. We did not exactly, we did yeah. not ask you. We didn't ask you to package it that way, <laughs> but it's really important to know because especially when you're in this space of managing your money, creating a plan for your finances. And like I mentioned, gender wage gap, investment gap, student loan debt balances, all not so great for women. It's important that we are mindful of every penny. And even though um, products and services can be, can be more expensive for women, we want to also find our own loophole so that we can save more money. Um, not for not also for women, not just for women, but also for children, like Barry mentioned with little girls products. And they also really, really get you with little girls products. And I can testify to that, uh, Anita, uh, because Anita is also Barry, by the way. Hi. <laughs> uh, because I have a, a son and a daughter that are twins the same age. And I can tell immediately, like, mm. buy my daughter something and I spend 100 bucks on clothes. My son's clothes, I mean, my son's clothes will be 60 bucks. <laughs> wow. Oh, and someone also shared a really interesting fact. So... Tushi Time said, girls and women's clothes and underclothing is designed to tear and wear out sooner. It's even built, it isn't even built as well as the boys. Look at the stitching. I agree. Yes. Wow. I agree. Looking at my kids' clothes, yes. My son's um, pants always have reinforced knees. Always. They have reinforced knees. And they're cheaper than my daughter's pants that do not have reinforced knees, but cost more because they're pink. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's and interesting. Said, oh, hell no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, twin mama. <laughs> okay, so the other error they get us, uh, Yasra, you're going to share. Sorry to kind of derail. This makes me so okay. angry. <laughs> I, I know. I completely get it. And, and we, we touched upon this is um, there's also this pink tax in children's um, toys, clothing, yeah. and, and other equipment. Um, so that same study that I mentioned done in New York City found that girls' toys cost 11% more than boys. Mm -hmm. um, bikes for girls were 6% more. And the helmet, the most important part of that, cost 13% more than the boys. Yes. I, I, my kids, we bought them bikes and helmets and my son's set was cheaper than my daughter's set by like 60 bucks. Yep. And when it comes to clothing, they found that, um, the girls, uh, clothing for girls were four to 13% more. And that's starting with onesies, not just like toddlers or small kids. It's like, even for infants, they're doing that. 
Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, one thing to point out is that it's called a pink tax, but it's not an actual tax. It's not like an actual mm -hmm. tax that's instituted by the government or your local state government. So it's hard to say, it's, it's hard to call it out because it's not a formal tax, right? Um, it's called a pink tax because we are being taxed for products that are, it's, we are being taxed on products marketed to women. Well, we're being charged more and the way it's, it's like a tax because we're paying more when we shouldn't really have to, mm -hmm. when it's manufactured on the same manufacturing line, it's the same cost, despite the packaging, you know, it's stored in the same warehouse, the ingredients are exactly the same. So essentially, when you think about it, it's, it's, it's a tax, a pink tax, right? Uh, women's tax, it's an unofficial tax, but it is somewhat of a tax. And the other category, Yasmir, is insurance, right? Yes, health insurance. So before the imagine, yeah, <laughs> this was infuriating because oh, I have health insurance. But before the Affordable Care Act, um, insurances charged women more for their insurance. Um, and it was found that women paid 1.5 times more than men on health insurance, despite it not offering the offering anything differently, not even maternity leave. Maternity leave is not, or maternity care is not included in that, yet we pay more. Can you imagine you, for health care insurance, you pay more? That is infuriating right um and so yeah the other the other thing that i want to call out to make you even angrier is that there is an actual tax on women's products and this is the tampon tax this is an actual official tax where in 27 states in the u.s as of last year um states will apply sales tax to feminine hygiene products that are deemed necessary for women. So this is an actual legal tax. Every time you buy tampons, sanitary pads, liners, anything that's under female hygiene or feminine hygiene item, you are paying an official sales tax, right? Men do not pay a men's hygiene tax. And to me, that's ridiculous. That's 27, pretty much half of the states in the U.S. are charging women a tampon tax. And it is called, it is called the tampon tax. That's, it makes me mad. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so there, uh, Tina says uh, she went to get swim shoes, men's $12.99, women's $29.99. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Christy said... Uh, she got coupons at CVS this week, and there are two coupons that could be used for men's razors versus women. So she purchased the men's. Yeah. So it's really important to be aware of these taxes, right? Um, so for example, I'll give you some examples. Um, for pain relief medication, um, if you buy any period pain relief that's ma that's marketed as period pain relief versus plain Tylenol or Excedrin, you're likely paying 50 cents to a dollar more for that feminine product. Um, you know, body wash can be one to three dollars more for the women's version. Um, shaving cream can be one to two dollars more. Again, same product, same ingredients, just different packaging, same factory. <laughs> yeah. And let me remind you for the third time, on top of the gender wage gap, on top of the women's investing gap, on top of the fact that women have the highest average student loan debt burden in America. So what can we do to get around this nonsensical, irritating, aggravating pink tax? Mm -hmm. Yeah, first thing um, you might want to look into is um, reach out to your legislatures, the people that are in charge of uh, <laughs> making laws and and talk to them, say, hey, this is not fair. Um, I live here, I pay my taxes, like why am I paying more for this? Um, and share with them what Bola just shared, that we are, there. unfortunately there's a, 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 a investment gap, a wage gap, and we hold most of the uh, student loan debt. Um, 
so that's an art also an argument that you can make like and why are you charging fair. me a tampon tax their legislators mm -hmm. so really you can go online determine who the legislators are for your state for your your county for your your town find their email addresses create an email templates and seriously send them emails <laughs> Or yeah. write a letter, put a stamp on it, and put it in the mailbox. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can also use social media to voice yes. um, your, your concern about this and how infuriated you are. Um, there's hashtags that you can use, like hashtag pink tax. Um, yep. It's also a good way to educate other women that might not be aware. Because as we mentioned earlier, um, these we can't compare men's to women's products because they're in different aisles they're not they're often not together so we may not be aware that we're paying more for the same thing yes and social media is a great way to call it out because especially on twitter you can tag cvs hashtag pink tax why mm -hmm. are men's razors cheaper than women's razors why is there not a coupon for women's razors you can hashtag pink tax at whoever target walmart whatever the sales company is or even the manufacturer pfizer procter and gamble johnson and johnson question mm -hmm. i just bought a shower gel that is 20 percent more than this other shower gel why right mm -hmm. <laughs> this mm -hmm. is just an honest question and um, you just call them out on it and find out why. Because truly, you know, if it's made in the same factory, on the same manufacturing line, with the same ingredients, in the same plastic bottle, but one is pink and one is gray, why does it cost more? Is pink that much more expensive than gray? Then don't make it pink. As Anna said, yeah. we didn't ask for this packaging. <laughs> exactly. We did not ask. <laughs> and, you decided to make it pink. Yes. I don't even know if I like pink. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, That's so use crazy. social media, contact your local legislators. Okay. And lastly, um, you have power with your money. Um, you don't have to go for those ex more expensive items um really like the the ingredients between and, and the scents between male and female products like shampoo and, and stuff like that they're not um all that different so go for the male version of that product go for the men's razors um uh shampoo i don't know about that <laughs> honestly because my hair is like very uh, Sometimes you, you have to spend yeah. on the product that works for you, which, you know, and that's fine. Buy the product that works for you. If it's, you're yeah. going to pay the pink tax, we've already been paying this pink tax in so many ways. It's fine. Buy that. Mm -hmm. But in, in instances where you can save, right? So for me with razors, I'm not going to buy the women's razors because the men's are cheaper and they're better. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter can wear the same pants my son wears, like black pants or black pants, especially mm -hmm. when they're like, you know, skinny looking pants or jeans. If it's cheaper, I'm going to buy two of the boys versions, right? As opposed to buying her one pink that costs $5 more. Um, look for opportunities to save, right? Sometimes store brands just have a generic body wash that is non-gendered right? Um, that works amazingly. And you can pick that up instead of the fancy pink gender, genderfied uh, product that's costing you more than their, their male product. So um, it's just find ways to save. But again, if the product works for you, it works for you doesn't mean that um, you still can't call it out as being overpriced. Mm -hmm. um, I think when it comes to that tampon tax, that is something that should be called out. Like, why are we paying a tax on tampons, unnecessary or, or pads, unnecessary requirements for being female? We're paying a tax on that, really? 27 states, you 27 states, really? Sales tax? Not okay. <laughs> that, I mean, we're going to buy it, but I'm still going to call it out. Yes, it's very important too, as we mentioned, like we could be using that money to save, invest, pay down debt, um, student yeah. loan debt. 
Yeah, so it's it, like it this just puts us at a disadvantage. So really, like, put it out there, voice your concern, and educate others who may not be aware of this issue. Yeah, and it's you know it's always important to to be aware of how you are made to spend your money, right? Because a lot of these items are essentials. It's stuff that you buy every day without thinking about it. And when you really think about how much you spend on certain products for weeks, for months, for even years, it is a significant amount of money if they were priced appropriately. And instead, you're able to save or invest that money, right? Um, for those of you who are moms, you know how much money we spend on our kids' items, right? Um, I mean, onesies for babies cost 3 to 14% more for a girl's onesie versus a boy's onesie. Babies don't care what they wear and they poop and pee on them anyway. So you can put your baby in a white onesie that is appropriately priced as opposed to buying the more expensive pink frilly onesie, right? Um, put that in your registry. Let someone else buy it for you as a kid. <laughs> but you can then yeah. save save the difference. So it's all about knowing how you are being enticed to spend your money, but then instead being intentional about where you spend your money, especially on things that um don't really make a, a difference, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. yes, shampoo is 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 a, is a is a thing that you want to make sure you're using the right shampoo, the right face product, but there are other things that it doesn't matter what it is, mm -hmm. you don't care. Then don't spend all that money on it. Yeah. I, it's funny, I, you mentioned the, the kids' onesies. Um, my aunt, when she had my cousin, um, she, it, she was a girl, and uh, she would receive a lot of criticism because she would buy her girl blue onesies, like boys' onesies. Mm -hmm. And people were like, what, what are you trying to do? And she's like, I'm not spending more money uh, on, on a girl's onesies because it's pink i'm not yep. doing that so i'm dressing yep. my daughter in blue you know, it's like you know you don't have to buy into that like like that gender color yeah a few years ago i actually asked my dry cleaner like why is this man's my husband's man's shirt a white shirt more is cheaper to dry clean than my own shirt that has less material She's like, oh, women's shirts need special treatment. I'm like, but this is a white cotton shirt and this is a white cotton shirt and one is big and one is small. <laughs> yeah. What's the special treatment? She's like, oh, that's how the pricing is. That's how the pricing is. I'm like, no, I'm going to wash my stuff at home myself. Give me back my shirt. <laughs> you know, wow. so, yeah, it's things like that. So ask your dry cleaner, why are you charging me more to, to dry clean this dress when that, you know, that shirt is... is <laughs> Three times cheaper. I mean, the dress and the shirt are different, but when it comes to a wool sweater that's big and a wool sweater that's small, they should be the same price. In fact, the women's smaller clothes, clothes, the the shirts, the sweaters, they should be cheaper to dry clean, not yeah. more expensive, because it's less yeah. material, which means you're using less product to do whatever you do to to clean this smaller item. <laughs> So anyway, we just wanted to talk about the pink tax with you guys today so that you are aware, so that you can call it out. And so that more importantly, you can be mindful of how you're spending your dollars, uh, especially if you have children of different genders, especially when you are in the store yourself looking at women's hygiene products, feminine hygiene products, you know, all those things that are charged charge more uh, for women intentionally. So yeah, we wanted to talk about that. We have an article on the pink tax on Clever Girl Finance. Just go to clevergirlfinance.com, search pink tax. Um, and also if you do a Google search, you'll find all these different studies that have been done. Um, the pink tax is supposedly illegal, but with everything that is illegal, <laughs> there's always a loophole. There's yeah. a roundabout way to get roundabout. <laughs> yeah. The issue so analyst said don't go i'm upset about the pink tax <laughs> <laughs> we're upset too girl yeah <laughs> okay so yeah um we'll be back next week don't forget to check out the books please uh the clever finance books and don't forget to stop by the website and check out the planners also for those of you who don't know the clever finance blog we actually 
update the blog every single day. There are 17 writers who create articles on so many topics. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles on Clairol Finance. Every single day there is a new article or like two to three new articles. So please stop by the blog. There is no, you don't have to enter an email. There's no charge. And if you want to take things uh, further with financial wellness, sign up for one of our 30 plus free courses. Our courses are, again, no charge, completely free. We'd love to have you join our community. And we will be back next week. Uh, we have a new series of Real Women Talk Money coming soon in the next couple of weeks. So you guys will be seeing that. And uh, yeah, so until next week, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>